Okay. So, what is this? There's a couple of different types of problems that you're going to get on the Coast Guard. And they're also, you know, and uh, uh, the, the first couple problems we're going to do, you should know how to do, period. Anyway. The other ones are like doubling the angle on the bow kind of stuff, all right? That's going to be using something called table seven. Frankly, I've never used that ever in my career. I doubt you ever will either, but it's on a Coast Guard exam, so we going to do it, okay? So there's four types of problems that we're going to do today, okay? Four types of problems that we're going to do today. And two of them are almost exactly the same problem. They use, they use slightly different steps, but you're going to do a different problem. You'll see that. Okay. So, advance. Okay. Given one bearing and two distances, this is going to be one kind of problem. You're going to be given a bearing and you're going to be given a couple of distances. Okay. How many bearings were you given? One. And you'll be given two distances. Ah, that's going to be one kind of problem. There's going to oh, cut. There's going to be another type of problem. It's going to be given how many bearings? Two, two bearings at two times. Okay, that's going to be another kind of problem. There's two problems in this style, and there's two problems. This is really two different styles, but anyway. And then these two are very related, right? But if you're gonna, what you're, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have, because you're gonna have all these things together on an exam. So how are you gonna distinguish them? Two bearings at two times, table seven, okay? So two bearings, table seven, okay? Two bearings, table seven. One bearing, you're gonna use, Trig or Pythagorean theorem. Okay, trig or Pythagorean theorem. All right. So, can, Dan, can you read that from all the way over there? It's okay. Okay. And uh, Devaney, can you read that from all the way there? Bailey, that's okay. Okay. All right. So, one of these, when you're given one bearing in two distances, you're going to have to find the required force to pass an object. Okay, here's an example. You're cruising along, okay? You're cruising along, and you're like, yeah, here's my force line. We're going like this. And there's a freaking something. Like a light. You're like, crap! If I keep going like this, I'm going to run aground! I'm lose my license. It's gonna be an environmental disaster. I'm gonna to go to jail and pay a lot of money. Feels like 2020, anyway. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna alter course to port or starboard and leave it on your starboard side. And you're gonna have a CPA. Okay, it's like oh, leave it half a mile, a mile, two miles to my port to my starboard. Okay, so you're gonna be given a distance. It's gonna say oh, the thing is is like 10 miles off your bow. Alter course to leave it one mile off your starboard beam. So here's a distance. And then it's gonna be, oh, one mile off my starboard beam. There's the second distance, okay? And then they're gonna want you to calculate the new course that you're gonna to have to steer. Well, if you're steering zero nine zero here, and you calculate that you're supposed to change your course by 10 degrees, what's your new course going to be? One zero. One zero zero. Okay. That's going to be this type of problem. I require course. How are we going to do this? Trig. This is going to be a right angle. So you're going to do theta, and it's, oh, well, Opposite over hypotenuse, sine opposite over hypotenuse, sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So 
sine of this angle x equals uh, one over 10. X equals inverse sine of one over 10 and out top terrain. Okay. That's going to be one type of problem we're going to do. We're going to do two of those problems in just a minute. I'm just wetting your appetite here a little bit. Okay. These are prenums. Okay. We're going to go over through all this again in just a minute. Okay. How many bearings were you given? One. It's dead ahead. Okay. In this type, the thing is always going to be dead ahead. And then you're going to alter course. Okay. That's one thing. Another natural extension of this is going to be, hey, you know what? If you altered your course to leave it one mile, and you know, this is like 10 o'clock in the morning, and you're making uh 15 knots, and it turns out, you know, you're gonna you're, you're gonna end up calculating this leg. You're gonna end up calculating that leg. Okay. Well, if I know that this one's 10 and that one's one. If I can determine how long this leg is, and then I can do my rate times time equals distance, I can figure out how long it's going to take me, right? Well, if I know that this is 10 and this is 1, how can I freaking calculate how long this is? There's a couple different ways. I can use sine cosine tangent, or A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. Now, Captain Parrot used sine and cosine, and I posted his key. I'm going to use Pythagorean theorem, and I posted my key. Okay. But I'm going to want to solve for A squared. So, what is that? A squared equals C squared minus B squared. Now I got to get rid of the square. I take square root of both sides, square root of A squared. Oh. Oh, that's a to the two over two. You guys remember that from from Yeah. Anyway, let's not worry about that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, if I take the square root out, I get a. Okay. So that's going to be the second type of problem. We're going to do that. Stuff that you've already done at some point or other. Now those are two types of problems, and they're all related to there's something on your bow. Don't freaking hit it. Here's your CPA. They're not going to call it CPA, though. They're going to say, leave it two miles on your starboard, leave it two miles on your port. Okay? And you're going to have to figure that out. If it's required course, okay, if it's required course, you're going to do a little sign, a little sign in. If it's what time you're going to be a beam, you're, you can do two of those, a sign and a cosine, or you can just do Pythagorean. Okay? You're just going to have to be able to recognize that and do it. There's another kind of problem, okay? Find distance off of an object at the time of second bearing. How many bearings are you given in this? Two bearings and two times. So if you're given two bearings and two times, you're gonna use table seven, okay? You're gonna use table seven, all right? So, or, uh, at the end of this, if anybody's interested, I, I can show you how you can do it on a moving board. You can do all these problems on a moving board. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with these two. Okay. So what I did was, this is in your handout packet. Now your handout packet is not in the order that we're going to go through stuff. It's totally screwed up. Okay. Uh, it's totally screwed up. So. I've given you several sheets of paper, right? There's this thing, there's, there's these tables. We're not gonna need these until we do table seven. So just put this to the side, okay? Put this to the side for now. It looks like this, got a little boutage page, boutage page, put that to the side for me. Then there's, uh, there's these two, okay? And um, these two should really go together. I forgot to put this page in. So this, there's like three pages stapled together and then there's uh, another page, fine time of beam. That one goes at the back. So this would become seven and that would become eight. So if you were to download this handout packet online, okay? Anyway, that would be seven and eight, okay? Okay, great. So we're actually gonna start 
We're actually going to start on page five. <laughs> ah, take that. Okay. Go to page five. Find the required course. Okay. And we're going to do number one and number three on page five. Then we're going to skip to this single handout and we're going to do one and three of fine time again. Okay. Then we're going to go to table seven. All right. Let the beings commence. Let, let, the, uh, let the learning commence. Let the learning, yeah. Okay. So we're looking at this. While on a course of 066 PGC, well, so you're steering by a gyro. Good for you. A light bears 18 degrees on the port bow at a distance of 12.3 miles. Okay. So this one is a slight twist on what I just showed you, but we're going to work this out. So while on a course of 066, a light bears 18 degrees on the port bow at a distance of 12.3 miles. So what do we know so far? Well, I'm steering. So I'm going to draw something. Okay. So this is one. Oh, uh, uh, before I do that, this one. While on a course of 216 PGC, a light bears 12 degrees on the, on the bow. How many bearings do they give you to the light? One. How many bearings to this? One. Down here, we're going to do this one in just a minute. How many bearings? One. How many bearings? One. Okay, only one bearing. When we go to the next style of problems, we're going to have two bearings. Two bearings, table seven. One bearing, not table seven, trig, okay? Anyway, so this is number one, required course. So what do we know? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna just draw, that's zero, nine, zero. I'm just gonna draw something like this, okay? This is my course, zero, six, six. If you wanna write the PGC, you can, it won't hurt, but you won't, it's, it won't matter if you, if, you, if, you don't, if you don't have it in there. Okay, so I'm doing 066, okay? Now, there is a light on my port bow. How many degrees on my port bow? Okay, so that means this is going like this, port's over here. And this is important. If you screw this up and you put this down here, you're gonna be totally effed, okay? If I'm going this way, port's that side. So I see a light over here, and this is 18 degrees, okay? This is 18 degrees, okay? All right, now, we don't know exactly what this angle is at the moment. I mean, we, we, don't, know, we don't know what our distance is, but what they say is, hey, you know what? You want to alter your course to leave the light four miles on your port beam. Four miles on your port beam. Okay? So, if this is more than four miles, we're going to alter course to port. If it's less than four miles, we're going to alter course to starboard. We don't know yet. Okay? We don't know yet. So, we're not going to worry about that detail just yet. Okay? But what we do know is, is that if this is our object, we want a CPA of four miles, okay? And we want to leave it on what side of us? Port, okay. We want to leave it on the port side of us, okay? So what we know right now is that at this moment, it's 12.3 miles on our bow. This moment is 12.3 miles on our bow, okay? And that direction at the moment, uh, if this is 066, if we're doing 066, what's the actual direction to the buoy? 040. Okay, so to get the direction of the buoy, okay, so the buoy is 066 minus 18. So what is that, 048? Okay. So this is 0, 4, 8. So we just derived that, okay? 
Okay. We may not, we may or may not need that number. We'll have to wait a second. Okay. All right. Now, what course should you steer to leave the thing four miles? All right. I'm going to steer some course here now. Okay. And I'm going to assume actually, let me just, let me just, it doesn't really matter what we do here, but I'm going to make my circle here a little bit bigger. Okay. Cause I'm getting crouched into my line. I'm just going to go like this. Okay. I want to pass that thing four miles. So what am I going to do? If I want that thing to be four miles of beam, what am I going to do with my new course? I'm going to draw it. So it's just tangent to that four mile CPA ring. Okay. Cool. So this leg is now four. This leg is 12.3. Guess what? How far am I supposed to, what, 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 what's, what's the condition I'm supposed to be in when I'm four miles off? What does it say? Four miles what? Four miles what? On the port beam? So if I'm doing this, and I'm steering this, tell me when my port beam is. I'm steering this, tell me when, it's on my port beam. Oh, what's this freaking angle right here? 90. When it's on my port beam, what is going to be the angle between my course and the buoy? Okay, so this is a crucial step. You have to put the 90 degree angle in the right spot. You have to put the 90 degree angle in the right spot. The 90 degree angle is going to go between your new course and the beam wagon, for lack of a better word. Okay? The beam leg, leg of a triangle. Okay? So, you ready? It gave me this 18 degree angle, great, okay? This is where it starts to get a little bit like, ah, what angle am I trying to figure out now? What I wanna know is the angle from the buoy to my new course, okay? So, that is gonna be, I'm gonna call that, uh, we can call that, you know, C or whatever, or whatever, theta, okay? So I have a right angle. What's this? This, this, if, so this is what I got now. Which one of those is the hypotenuse? 12.3. Okay, so I have an angle here. I have opposite, I have hypotenuse. What function am I gonna use? Okay. So sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So theta is going to equal inverse sine of opposite over hypotenuse. Theta equals sine the minus one of opposite four over 12.3. Theta equals 19 degrees. Okay. Theta equals 19 degrees. What course would you steer? You can figure this out two ways. What course should I steer? If in order, I start off and the, 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 it's 18 degrees off my port bow. But I want it to be 19 degrees off my port bow based on this math. What course should I steer? Why did you get that? Because you're already at 18, so you only have to move one degree. Yeah, I only need one. So I can add one to there. And now that is 0, 6, 7. What's another way I could have done it? Add it to the 0, 4, 8. I could have added 19 
to the 0, 4, 8. And that also would have given me 0, 6, 7. Okay? We're going to do another one of those in just a minute. Questions? Who's having fun? <laughs> Thank you, sir. May I have another? Yes, you may. We'll do number three. Okay, now look. These are a little bit, uh, you're going to have to practice these to get the routine down. Here is the thing. Here's the thing. Okay? Where you need, where, where, where are you going to have your issues? Port or starboard. You have to get that, you have to get that right. Okay? If you had put this the other way, you would have done the math at the end differently. You would have still gotten 19 degrees, but then you would have subtracted it instead of adding it. And you would have got a different number. Okay? So you got to get your port and starboard right. Where else can you get tripped up on these? You've got to get the right angle in the right spot. Of the triangle. If you would put your right angle here, you would have been totally screwed up. Because then you'd think this was the hypotenuse. And you were looking for the hypotenuse. So if you put the right angle there, you're gonna think, oh, I'm looking, I have A and B, I'm looking for C. No. Okay. The right angle, the right angle will always go between the new course and whatever is the distance of beam. That's where the right angle goes. Okay. Where's the right angle go, Christian? The new course relative to the object and the and the the leg that is going to be the beam leg. Okay. I don't know how, how big it makes the radius. Right? It, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we, really we could have drawn this whole thing like this. Okay, so you know you could have drawn it without your courses in there at first, and you could have calculated that this should be 19. Okay, then you could realize, well, I got 19, I only need 18. I had 18 already. I just need one more. Okay, so there's there's so there's a little bit of guessing, and so don't get bogged down. Your picture could end up being wrong. Okay, don't get bogged down by that. Okay. All right, so that was the first one. Let's do, and, and if you go to the PowerPoint, you know, anyway, there it is right there, okay? Great. All right, let's do this one. This is number three. Okay, while on a course of 216 PGC, okay? Would it matter if they told me 216 true, 216 compass? No, as long as all the numbers are the same, okay, there's only one compass. Anyway, if it, if it was true or compass or, or magnetic, it wouldn't matter because there's only one course given, right? So anyway, so you're on a course at 216, all right? So here we go. Now we're doing number three. We're on a course at 216, all right? So that's like 180, that's 270, that's two, 216 enough, okay? A light bears 12 degrees on the port bow. Okay? A light bears 12 degrees on the port bow. Now, this is one that can really screw you up. Which is my port bow? Is this my port bow or is this my port bow? Okay, yeah. Now you gotta like, oh, I gotta put my pencil this and go like this way, that's starboard, that's port. Okay, this is port. When you're drawing them over here in the southwest quadrant, it's easy to get a little bit confused, okay? So, port bow is gonna be this side. Well, on a course of 216, a light bears 12 degrees on the port bow. There's my light. 12 degrees. At a distance of what? So where's that 11.2 gonna go on my drawing right here? It's gonna be 11.2 miles to the light. Okay? 11.2 miles to the light. Okay? So Christian, at this point, if I was, if I, 
if I didn't want to be confused, I could erase this line. But I'm not going to need that line at, at this moment. Okay, but what course should I steer to leave the, the, the light two miles on my port beam? Okay, so where is that going to be? Am I going to steer? So now, so here you go. That's going to be my two miles. You don't have to draw this circle, okay? But I'm just trying to help to relate it to you here, okay? Where am I going to draw my line? Is my line going to go to here? Or is it going to go to here? Okay. Why do you say it above? Okay. So if you go to the above, that's right. So as you're coming down here, if you alter course like that, it's going to be on your port side. If you come down here and you go over here, it's going to be on your starboard side. It makes a difference. Okay. So. We're going to do something like this. What's this? That's the new course. That's the new course, right? Nathan, what's that? The new, course. new course. Nathan, what's the radius of this circle? It's a lot than... But they freaking tell you what the radius is. What's the radius? Uh, two miles. It's two miles. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to draw a line from the buoy, Nathan, I'm going to draw a line from the buoy to my new course track. The question is, is the right angle going to be here or is it going to be here? I'm going to draw a line. Is it going to be, am I going to have my right angle here or am I going to have my right angle here? The right angle always has to be with the new course. So that means that my right angle has to be here. Where does the right angle always go? with the new course. So this is my right angle. Okay, what it boils down to, and, and you don't even need, what it boils down to is that the, the initial distance is always going to be the hypotenuse. And the, uh, the, um, the, 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 the distance off is always going to be the opposite. So you can just skip right to sign. Okay, you can just, uh, what is this supposed to be? This supposed to be two miles? Okay, just given this information, you don't even draw, draw a picture, you can go like this, sine of opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Sine theta, opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So theta is sine of the minus one of two over 11.2. That becomes 10.3. How are we going to do the last step? How are we going to do this last step? So what that's saying is that this angle here needs to be 10.3. How are we gonna do my last step? You can do it a couple of different ways. But what I'm gonna do is, oh, you know what? Whatever this is, I'm just gonna add 10.3 to it. This is, the, this is uh, you know, the buoy. I wanna be 10.3. I wonder if I can figure out what the buoy is. What is the buoy? Less than okay, so this is 216 minus 12, and then it's going to be plus 10.3. That's one way to think about it, okay? So that would be uh, 2, what is that, 204? Yep. 204. So this is 204, and I want to be plus 10 degrees. So that's 214.3. Okay? That's not the only way you could have figured that out, okay? We could have done this, uh, you know, anyway, I didn't do it that way. But, uh, you know, if it's 12 
if it's 12 degrees now and I need 10, I got 1.7 too many. Anyway, I could do it that way, blah, blah, blah. I didn't do it that way. I'm not going to do it that way. It doesn't work for my brain. But that might work for yours. Okay? That's how those problems are going to go. Okay? That's how those problems are going to go. What were they asking us to figure out? What are they asking us to figure out? A new course. New course. You're going to do sine of the angle equals the hypotenuse equals uh, opposite over adjacent, which in this case, opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is going to be the beam distance. divided by the original distance, okay? It's always, the pattern is gonna always be that. It's gonna be whatever is the beam will be on the top, whatever is the, uh, the distance that you initially saw it is gonna be on the bottom, and you're gonna do inverse sine on that. Okay, this type of problem is always going to be this. This type of problem is always going to be this. Okay? Now you can memorize that, or you can sort of derive it with a picture. It's up to you. Then, after you get this angle, then you got to flex with the angle to get the course. Okay? This was us calculating the angle, and this was us flexing with the angle. Okay? We got the new course. So I gave you like eight of those, okay? Good times, good times. We're gonna move on to the next problem, and then we'll take a break, and then we'll do table seven. Okay, let's do this next one. Day with the new boards. So many educational decisions. <laughs> 